and welcome back to week two of the Paper Haven Beginners Card Making course. And I'm thrilled to say that my apprentice from last week has decided that he's happy to come back again this week, aren't you? Craig? I'm indeed, yes. Yep, you're back. I'm back. Yep, have you, you've got your notebook, I can see. Your notebook. You've got your notebook with you. And um, for anybody who didn't watch last week, we went through the basics, didn't we? we stamping, did. basic stamping, and we did a little bit of... Matting and layering. Matting and layering. And you yep. went through your measurements. Yep. Yep. So, shall we go through your cards? For anybody who didn't watch last week, do you want to show off your cards that we did last week? Oh, if I must. Using the ocean front stamp set. Let me just check that's on. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We're in. Yeah, so the uh, bird set. Can you remember the, the style of the name of the card? How it opens? If I give you a clue, that one's a tent one. Can you remember what that one was? Portrait. A book fold. Oh, book fold, yeah, yeah. Do you remember books? It's like a book. Then we got the, either the tent fold one. Yeah. So they were the same card bases, but we just did them the other way around. Yeah. And then this is your favourite one. I'm proud of this one. Because you did really well and you, cor you corrected that. You had a little bit of a wobble, didn't you, with did the you? stamping the grasses and you did another one. Yeah. So that's your matting and layering that we did. So that's what we did last week. We're using the ocean front stamp set. And we're just using four colours for this course, trying to keep it simple. We're also using the Special Moments stamp set. Now, if anybody does want to um, purchase the items that we're using on this course, I will put links in the video description. And if anybody does purchase all of the items that we're using, then I will send you this stamp set for free. That's nice, isn't it? That's very good, yeah. Yeah, but I've only got eight. Okay. But, you know, I think that's really good, that, don't you? Lovely, yeah. That's really good. So we've got all the greetings that we'd need, really. So... We've got our stamps. Look what I've done for you today. I've put your blocks in a, a nice little thing for That's you. That's good, though. You like that? Yeah, I like that. Yeah? We've got organised for you. Right. What we're talking about today, we're going to do some die cutting. Okay. Okay. Now, you might... And we're going to do some embossing. Okay. There's two types of embossing. There's heat embossing, which is with a heat tool. You know, that sounds a bit like hair dryer. You've maybe heard me use it before. Yep. We're not doing that today. We're doing dry embossing which creates like a texture. Okay. We're going to go through that. Uh, and we're going to use some embossing folders and we're going to use a tool called the cut and emboss machine. Now I'll try and bring this into camera, but it's this bad boy here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to use that and we're going to talk about that and the benefits of that and things. All right. So first things first, we're going to make this little card here. All right. All right. So, if I just say what we need to do, and then maybe you can do it. I've topped up your cardstock, and I'll tell you which pieces you need. Okay. But we're using the thick basic white to do the book fold style. And then I'm cutting a piece of crumb cake down um, to go behind. And then we're going to do the same sort of stamping as last week, but we're going to stamp onto this die cut piece where we're going to use the machine, and we're going to talk a little bit about about that and how that works, all right? Right. So I'm just gonna find the right piece of card for you. That's thin white, okay. Hmm. Is that the thin or is that the thick? Doesn't matter, it's fine. Right. Do you want to make a card base from that please, a book fold? Do you want to have a go with your book, at looking in your book? So you've got your measurements there and yep. your trimmers in front of you there. It is. So if you need to, to be fair, like, it's been a week since you've crafted. So, you know, you might have forgotten or, you know. So we're doing a tent fold or do you want to do a book fold? Doing a put, uh, book fold. Right, you're cutting or scoring? Scoring. Right, well, you've got, you need to, if you read your first thing, you need to put it in portrait, your card. That's it. You were looking at right measurement. All right. Yep, and you're on at 10.5. Excellent. 10.5, yep. Don't score too hard on this one because I think I've given you thin white card, but it's fine. Okay. Yep, let's have a let's have a look how that's scored. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And then we turn it round, don't we? And what are you doing here? 14.8. Yep. Yeah. Lovely jublet, and then 
Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. You were right. You see, you're doubting yourself on what, what you were using then. Okay. So then we've got two card bases. Ooh, we've scored a bit thin here, but it's fine. We'll sort them out. It's my fault for telling you to be gentle. Here we go. We've got two card bases. Right. Okay. Can just put them to one side for now. Yep. To start with, let me put them over here. I'll leave them. No, we'll leave them on the trim. Right, now what we're going to do, we're going to create a background of colour, right? Okay. So we're sort of doing a little bit of matting and layering, but we're only going to do the largest measurement on your list. Do you yeah. remember you've got your little measurements list? Yeah. So last time, let me show you what I mean, and I'll refer you back to your card you made because it's eas easier. You did, you did the smallest one was 9 by 13.3 wasn't it, on your list there? Yeah. And then your blue one was 9.5 by 13.8. Yeah. And then the card itself was 10.5 by 14.8. Yeah. Just to confuse matters, there is another measurement you can do, which is what I've done for this. And it is in between these larger two, okay? Okay. So if you want to write week two for today. Oh, new page. New sheet. New oh, page. good thinking, Batman. Okay. I'm going to have a drink of a tea that you kindly made me. Week two. Week two. Okay. So here we've only got a little border. Can you see the white border here is right. narrower than it is here? So this measurement here is 10 across by 14.3. Okay. So if you write on your sheet, um, crumb cake piece or background piece, whatever... So Background piece, you can write. And it's 10 centimetres by 14.3. Now, the reason why it's that is because the whole card is 10.5, yeah? Yeah. By 14.8. So you can see we've come in just 0.5 this week. So I've got a question. Yes, go who, on. Who comes up with all these measurements? I just measure, done them myself. So is this from experience or is this what other card makers do? It is do? from experience. We know that a standard A6, this is called an A6 size yeah. piece. You know, A4, A6 is a quarter of A4. Yeah. So four of these put together like this would be A4. Yeah? Okay. Yep. Yeah. A5 is half and then we've got A6. Right. Yep. Yeah. So it's confusing because the pieces get smaller, but the numbers go up. Yeah. yeah? It, it's confusing. So A1 okay. is the biggest, even though it's the smallest number. Yeah? yeah. So it all depends on personal preference. On this one, I quite fancied a big border of white. So I thought I'm going to come in a whole centimetre, which means it's half a centimetre from yeah. either side. On this one, I wanted a, a narrower border. So I've just personally chosen to come down. So I know always in my head that a whole piece of card is 10.5 by 14.8. Right. And you've got that measurement here on page one. Yep. Yeah. So we've just come down half a centimetre. Okay. Yeah. So now what we're going to do then is you're going to cut this piece at that measurement. Right. All right. Okay. So we're not scoring. We're simply just cutting. And if you were doing a batch, if you were making these in a, in a batch and you wanted to do... Lord, you'd get four of these out of an A4. Yeah. So, Putting it in portrait, right, yeah, you were perfectly going. right. And we're, we are just cutting, so your cutting blade's already in so place. Um, 10. 10. Yeah. Yep. So get it yep. right on 10. And if you want, you can always check down here on the bottom of your trimmer that you've got it straight. And there's another measurement in the middle. That's good, darling. Like yeah, that. it's good. So you can just, because it's easy to let it, you know. Yeah. So, so I'd want to cut that. So cutting, yeah. Yeah, we'll cut him. Oh, I'll tell you, I've got to the, I've got the uh, stamping up wobbles. <laughs> Have you got, are you nervous? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did so well last week. You've had more views than yeah, me. But, but the thing is, it's, I want it to get so right now. I want it, good, I want good. Perfect. That's yeah. good though. That's the thing. Okay, so we this is spare. We we'll put it yeah. in our pile. We flip and now we do the other measurement. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Let's put those aside. Now, I need to give a shout out today for a lovely lady called Caroline, 
who I told you about, Caroline, and she's a new customer of mine. Sorry, I don't mean to. You've got it on 14.3. Yeah, I'm just going to find her, yeah. And she's a beginner crafter, so yeah, she's had okay. a watch of your video. All right. Yeah. Lovely. So she's not ordered this set yet, but it's really inspired her. All right? Oh, I'm happy so with that. So that's, that's great. Yeah. All right? That's absolutely fantastic. What I might ask you to do is, while you've got the trimmer out, just trim that one down to 14.3. Put it back in landscape because it's slightly longer, and we'll use it on another card, and it means if you go to 14.3 again... It means we don't have to get the trimmer out again for the next card because we've already got our card base. It's just thinking in advance, thinking on in advance, you know. Okay. Yep, so just make sure that's it. Perfect. I'm cutting that, yeah? Yep, cut, yep. Cutted. And then that's just scrap. We can get anything that okay. small we throw in, we throw away in the recycle. Fantastic. Right, you can put your that to one side. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay, so we're gonna you're gonna glue that piece onto your white card base, okay. yeah? Please, that's all right. That's, yeah, so is it? So yeah, so it, it should just be equal. like a board again, yeah. Yeah, you want an equal border, so we've got your glues here, not too much, remember. Okay. Dot dot dot. You, you need to do more than a dot, like a, a fast line, not too thick a line, like a millimeter. Move it quite well. No dot. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's good. Maybe a tiny bit closer to it, about half a centimetre. That's all right, that would be fine, yeah. If you do a few dots. Oh, are you up? No, it's not. Do it properly. Okay. You're doing it properly, are yeah. you? Do it properly. Well, people might be disappointed that you've done the glue. Okay. Just. Right, okay. I'm in the wrong job. What have we got now? What's this? I don't know. Oh, right. It's a thermometer. <laughs> thermometer. Yeah. Right, you can right, do okay, that so, onto your yeah, card now. Onto the card. But when you are gluing, where's the best place to glue it? Is it on the edge? Is Towards it... the edge, but not too far to it because it spreads out. When so you... does this glue yeah. spread out? It does, yeah. 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 Okay. So that looks pretty good, what you've done. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. Right, here we go. So we're going to get that. And you remember, the wet glue gives you a few seconds to manoeuvre it if you need to move it up or across or... Oh, I do, yeah. Yeah? Gives you a bit of, we like to call it a bit of wiggle room. Um, okay. That should be, that's all right. You're, yeah. you're good there. Yeah, perfect. Right, so we've got our background. We can, we can set that Is it to worth side. doing this, going around the sides? Of the, on the, yes. Or is that yeah. the problem? But do that if you know you've got clean hands. Because, you know, we've not inked anything up yet, so we shouldn't okay. have ink on our hands. But all crafters will have done it. They'll have gone to do this. They've got some oh, no. excess ink yeah. from somewhere. You know, it gets on your block. It gets everywhere. Um, so, yeah, put that to one side now, because okay. now what we're going to do, we're going to talk die cutting okay. and die cuts, right? Okay, so I'm just going to show the catalogue. Now, at the time of filming, this was our current catalogue at the time that we film, filmed this and this has gone out on what date is it it is the 25th of april today monday 25th um this catalogue only has another a week left actually of it right. we've got a new one coming out third of may now the die cutting and the cut and emboss machine it's always all at the back of the book um, and this is what we're dealing with today we're going to be working with this the um stamping cut and emboss machine okay or i like to call it the boss the boss yeah yeah like me okay well you and, you and bruce <laughs> okay so this is the boss machine all right okay. so was it born in the usa <laughs> well actually it is an american company yeah, yeah. stamping up so this with this machine you can cut shapes right. okay. out yeah. and you can create the textures which is we're going to cover both of those today but there is a lot of there is a lot to go through with this and this is um this is and my lovely new lady caroline has purchased one of these so we need to show her today how okay, she's yeah. going to use it well, it's first of so it? exactly yeah. so i'm going to show people all the elements that we're going to use in here so that's what we're using we, we are using the large machine um but there there are smaller it is in a smaller machine available it's a little bit more portable so this is the machine okay. and it is quite and you know i'm fine lifting it um but it does take up a little bit of desk space however we've designed it so that the platforms are locked in place here and they open up like this right okay 
and this is what we're going to work so is it with. it effectively a pressing machine? It is. And when I've ever done kids' parties with it, I've described it and I've said, if you've listened in your history lessons and you've listened about Victorian times, and I've actually now forgotten the word, what's that, the thing that they used to dry the washing through? And they oh, ran I mean, it through. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Press kind of thing, isn't it? And yeah. I've forgotten the word of it. And someone's going to tell tell us. Um, but yeah, it's like it's like that. I so, know, is it? No, I can't remember what it is, and I'm going to be cross. So what we have here, we have these two cutting plates, and we're going to put both of them down. We need we need plate one, but it tells us what we're going to do. So to use with thin dies, we need platform one, which okay. is that we've got the number on, yeah. Yep. It tells us we need platform two, yeah? yeah, which is here, number two. Yep. And then, so that, I tell my um, clients, customers, to think of this as if you're making a sandwich and this is your plate that your sandwich yeah. is going to go on. You're going to, yeah, we put that on the platform, yeah. right? Right. Then we use these clear plates. Now, they're not very clear because they've been very well loved. Okay. Um, but that one goes on. Think of that as your piece of bread. Your first right. piece of bread, yeah? And now we're going to get our die out. And these are a set of dies. Right. So why are they called dies? I actually don't know why they're dies called actually... die cutting. I don't know. It's D-I-E, not D-Y. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, mango. It's a mango that we're running close through. Okay. You know, in Victorian times, it were a mango. Right. So... Oh, this, right, yeah, this yeah. is the cutter. Now, if you look on the other side, oh, can you feel that edge? It's not sharp, is it? That's no, great. So that does a stitch defect. And then the cutter is this scalloped pattern all the way around. And that means we need to place that down on our card. Right. All right. Now, that's not sharp. But when it's forced through these rollers in here, there's yeah. two rollers, it's going to press through the card. Okay. So it means we do need to put some card in our sandwich. All right. Okay. So we have some here that was left over. Oh, actually, that piece looks amazing size. Perfect. Oh, look, it's like uh, it's yeah, one. Yeah. So remember this piece I said was your bread? Yeah. Yeah. For your sandwich. Yeah. We've got our plate. Eat We've place. got our bread. bread yeah. This is going to be our filling. Okay. That's the filling. And then what do we need on top? More bread. More bread. Yep. Yeah. So this is, these, this is number, these are number three. So we put these on. Yeah. Okay. We get them in. I start to push that through, and can you see the handle start to go? Yeah. I want to, you to do that towards you. So you've got this way? No, toward, toward, yeah, towards the front door of our house. So this yeah. way? Yeah. yeah. Can you see it's going through? Oh, wow. So you hold it, it's, it's quite... It's, yeah, it's getting a bit... Yeah, you lay clunks and clicks, and that's normal. Is it... Yeah. And sometimes the handle, you do need to tighten it, and I've got fears that it's going to... Um, it got... Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Once it's through, you wow, hear a clunk and Take your bread off. Take your top bread off. Okay. okay. Take your filling out and have a look. Oh, wow. And you've created your scallop piece. That's it, isn't it? So that's our scrap. We might need that for something else. Okay. We'll put that to one side. But now we've got our scallop piece. That's brilliant, I like that. Yeah. It's so good as well. It's good. And what crafters love is they love this stitch defect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, anything, it, it seems to add value if it's got a stitch defect on. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this behind us okay. out of the way just to give us a bit of table room. Okay. We'll be coming back to the boss in a minute. Okay. Right. We've not even done any stamping yet, have we? I think we've done about nearly 20 minutes and we've not done any stamping, but that's fine. We've got our lovely piece. So this is what we're now dealing with. Now, obviously, last week, when you did your first card, this was your first card, and you had quite a big surface to stamp on. Yeah. Now, you've got a very small surface. And if you look at your project that you're trying to replicate, there's not much spare, yeah, yeah. you know. It just fits in beautifully, though, in that. So remember from last week, we need our mat for stamping on, don't we? Okay. Remember, we always stamped on a mat, this uh, spongy mat. Yep. So we can pop that there. And it's time to get the stamp set out. So if I put your card like that for you to see. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and you've got your stamps there. You've got your blocks. Yep. And I'll get you your inks that you need. So if you want to start with the sky again. Okay. That's that one. 
All right. It's that one in here. You probably need the bigger block. Yep. Put it that way or would it that way? I'd probably put it that way. Second, yeah, because yeah. then you've got more room to go like that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go on. Yep. If, if in doubt, turn it round and press it down onto there. It's on the right way. Yep. Yeah. How do you know if it's on the right way? Because if when you turn it that way, you can match it up to the picture right, okay. on the box. Okay. Yeah. What you do is you can hold that against your picture on the your right, box yeah. and just check yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's on. Straight. Well, it doesn't matter because as long as you hold it straight okay. when you're stamping. Yeah. Okay, so do perfect. you want to open your ink pad? It's been a week since you opened an ink it pad. Has. Let's see if you can. <gasps> yeah. Perfect. You're good at that, right? Yeah. It's the makeup I've been using. <laughs> okay, so. So, this one we're not pressing down. It's quite inky, this one, but so we didn't go it too, too. I think, yeah, you can go a bit more than that. Get it as long as it's even. I think that's the key. Okay, okay that'll be good. And then you want, if you look at that card, it's quite up to the scallops. It's near the stitching. You sort of stamping it, yeah? Quite up near the top. Okay. Not far down at all. A good press, good solid press. Okay. And back up. Beautiful. And what I love about this, I'll keep that to one sec because yep. I've got two of these blocks this size. What I love is how the stamp goes over the stitching. Yeah, yeah. I just love that effect, yeah? Yeah. So we'll keep that there. Okay. Now you remember the name of this colour yesterday. Can you remember what it is? Barmy blue. Barmy blue. There we go. This is for the sky. Okay. So now need the, you uh, need your other stamp. That please. Thank you. It's that one. See, you do you, you, as you. Start to do this now, and you, you get into it. You, you, you become perfectionist. You do. <laughs> so yeah, you want the straight edge, and you're yep. going to overlap it with your sky a little bit. Yeah, lovely. That's gorgeous. Don't you think it just looks, the sea there just looks so realistic. Doesn't it? Yeah. And I love how this fits on this piece. Yeah, it's amazing. I do I do like it. Yeah. yeah it's very nice, is that? And then we're going to use the crumb cake for the sand. Now. Crumb cake. Well, yeah. before we do this, Caroline asked me in a question. It's quite a really good question, this. And it's made me think how no question is, an is, a, is a daft question. Yeah. yeah. Isn't... Absolutely right. She said, how do you come up with your colour combinations? Okay. Yeah. So for this one, it's actually quite an easy answer. It's quite simple because really there's only so many colours you can use for a sky and a sea yeah, yeah. and a sand. So, you know, technically we could have a red sky or a pink sky, but you're not going to choose a yellow sky. You know what I mean? So okay. with the sky and the sea, it, it's not, you know, and, and the sand, it's going to be a specific colours really. So you want two different shades of blue so that you've got a, your contrast between your sky and your sea. You want a contrast, right. don't okay. you? You don't want to really use the same blue because it'd all just look like one. And then you want a, a beige colour for the sand. And that's that's how I come up with a colour combination okay. for that. For other things, and if I'm using our stamping up papers, I tend to use the colours that are in the papers so it all matches. All right. But that's a really good question that I wanted to cover. Yeah, yeah, it's a good that question. Caroline asked. Very good question. So there's your crumb cake. Let's get you a block. Thank you. And the stamp that you need. That one we have to put on yeah, the side a little bit, yeah. And I think it goes the other way. Sorry, up, yeah. But yeah, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. I always have to double check myself with that one because it's a funny shape. One. Okay. Yep, and then you just sort of line it up, overlap it a little bit. It's a if you and then um lovely, lovely. Okay, and then finally we bring in soft oh, suede flowers, yep. To do the grasses. Um now. Do you want the larger one? Do you yes, want please, to use yep. that one? Do you want to grab a block that you think is suitable? We could use a smaller one as well if you wanted. I'll get that one out. Okay. We haven't used the boulders yet. We could maybe do that on another card. 
the rocks. Right, now this is the one where just check you've not got excess ink around. Have a practice with that one. Yeah. 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 So do lighter taps because you did a, a sort of a big press there. That's perfect action, like a tap. Okay. Yep. And then stamp it on the left if you want. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Pleased with that? Yeah. You just that. want one? Do you want to do some smaller ones? The smaller ones, I think, yeah. Okay. There's a small one there. And you, I brought you a right tiny little block if you want to use that one. <laughs> it's cute, isn't it? That? It's this, isn't it? <laughs> now, sometimes these lose the stick a little bit, but you yeah. can wash them with washing up liquid and it'll, you know, you can have a rinse them under the tap. Yeah. So I'll just do a little tap. That's it. That's it. Taps rather than a press. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, you might remember last week when we did our first card, we did our greeting down here. Yeah. And you think, well, yeah. I have no room. I have no yeah. room, Julie. A little effect that I love is on here. There's nothing to stop you stamping over the sky. Okay. Just because you've already stamped down with one colour, it, it doesn't, there's nothing to stop you stamping over that again. It's dry. Yeah, Nothing's yeah. going to leak or uh, run or go you know the ink's not going to bleed the colors are not going to bleed but i would use the darker um, brown color just okay. to make sure it stands out and you can choose a greeting that you want um over in the top right hand corner okay big congratulations big congratulations okay now oh, you always pick one that i've never used before which is really fun Okay, now then, now this is fun. This is really cool that you've picked this one. Okay. And you didn't know why. No. Nope. Sometimes with these, because when you, whenever you get a long thin one like that, they can bend a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now you could put this on the block, right? You could take this stamp. We're going to use a longer thin block here. You could take it, and because it's a bit bendy, you could accidentally pop it oh, on, God, yeah. and yeah, you yeah. could do it wonky. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see there. When you look at it, it's going like that. Yeah, yeah. What to do to avoid that happening is place it down on your work surface. And get it back on. Um, as if it's the way up that you're going to stamp it. Yeah. So let it naturally sit how it wants to sit. Let it breathe, right? Then take your block to it and pick it up right, perfect. like that. Yeah, yeah. And then you know it's on straight. Yeah, that's a good idea. But with this, you want to just make sure you get light taps and then we'll stamp it in that corner okay. and the reason i said to do it at this side is because it will balance out that that's at that side yeah making cards is about balance as well yeah easy on the eye yeah so we're just tapping with this out tap way. tap tap yeah oh i'll just try that because i think i put too much in there it's all right that okay. wasn't too bad okay yep yeah. Is a, don't press too hard because I can see some excess ink. So go down and straight back up. Not too bad. Yeah, Not too this. bad. Yeah, I was just worried about that excess ink. Okay. But that's all right. That's okay. Because we need to show people yeah, yeah, yeah. how, you know, um, yeah. we just need to get some. I think what we need to do is work on the even pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, that's that's fine. We can We can resolve that on our next one. All right. So now... Can you see on here, I've actually laid this up with some foam pads. We could glue it down on there like that. We could glue it down flat. Yeah. Or for a bit more interest, we can layer it up with a few foam pads. Yeah? Okay. If you want to. It's foam up pads. to you. Foam pads. Definitely, yeah. It was nice foam pads. Now, what we do, you've used these little guys. I you have. You know these little guys, don't you, Craig? I do. Why do you know them? Because they seem to appear all over the house on their own. <laughs> Well, you know the funny story. We well, found Cornwall, one in yeah. Cornwall and one in Santorini. Yeah. Oh, we got to Santorini, I don't know. <laughs> so what we do here is, what I would do is, I always start with the four corners. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget your cup. Have you had your cup, huh? I have. So we're just doing four on this one, aren't we? Yeah. Well, no, we'd probably do one in the middle, two okay. in the middle, because it, it we need some... Um, 
So I'd probably do maybe one in the middle. So it's like a number five on a die. That's okay. great. Yeah. And then peel the little backs off. They're your favourites. Those little pesky <laughs> backs of the dimensionals. Do you know what my mum calls these? She tries to get the names right. Directionals. <laughs> She's trying in class. One directionals. <laughs> okay. So I'm guessing we move it over there. Yep. Let's move this out of the way. Okay. Bring the card over. Yep. Again, just getting that. It is, you're right. You sometimes you have to stand over it and yeah. you it's hard not to get your head under the camera when you do mm, yeah. that, isn't it? Okay. All right. So there we go. So we've done the stamping on um a pe a die cut, scallop die cut. Brilliant. Right. We are gonna do another one with a scallop die cut, but just to add a bit of interest for the next one, we're gonna do the similar card. I think um we might do a different sentiment. I think it'd be nice to do more of a square one to to come down to balance that out we're going to do a textured background okay yeah and we're going to talk through all the different ones that we've got we're going to use some embossing folders okay so let's um clear these out of the way a bit keep a nice desk I throw them over my shoulder no. okay <laughs> <laughs> right so that's your first card we'll pop this on your pile here with your other cards right okay so what we're going to do now, you had a piece of crumb cake. Remember I said cut it because we're going to use that. You did. Yeah. Right. So this is, I need to get the catalogue out again and go through these. So these are right at the back of the book. And these, how I can describe the texture is, do you remember wallpaper yeah, yeah. in the 70s and 80s and it yeah. was called anaglypta and yep. superglypta? Well, these sort of, are a bit like that but in a trendy way <laughs> yeah okay so we're going to create some textures now the folders that i've brought down today are from um the another catalog but they've carried forward and they're going to be in the new catalog so they're not in this this current one but they are available they're in the mini catalog actually okay um but you can get brick ones you can do a brick background, you see there. Yeah, yeah. You could do ones with spots. You can do ones with words. Yeah, I love that yeah. as well. Yeah. Now, some of them to point out to um, our customers. Can you see the same mini on? Oh, yeah. These are half the size, so they fit in the mini machine. Right. If they don't say mini on, they don't fit in the mini machine. All right. Okay. Um, now, some of them also say 3D, right? And that means they're thicker folders because okay. they're, they're going to come out with a more 3d pattern all right and i'll show you what i mean by that now doing this embossing is something i don't do enough of it's a really cheap way of adding texture once you've invested in your machine um so these are the folders right so this one is a standard folder it's quite a thin folder yeah okay. and it does a gingham pattern right right It'll do a little check pattern. But this one, can you see it's a lot thicker? Oh, yeah. It's a 3D yeah, it folder. Right. That's a 3D. So it means it's going to be more of a, uh, it is going to be more 3D and it's going to be more texture. The, the pattern's going to be deeper. Okay. But these are small ones and these are designed to fit on a card front. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. We can cut, cut your piece out. And then we've got some larger folders for a bigger piece. That one does a bark. Can you see it? It does like the tree Lovely, bark. Yeah. yeah. And this one, I think you'll you'll love, and you might want to use this one or the hive one, I reckon. But we can show all of them. This does like an old-fashioned typewriter with a bit of. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's called Time Worn Type. It was in last year's mini catalog, but it's coming back. So yeah. that's a really nice one to do. Right. Yeah. Um. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the machine back. The boss. The boss is coming back. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here it is. Now, you have to have your wits about you with this because okay. I always forget. Because I don't do embossing enough, I forget the the um, recipes, call right. recipes for the sandwiches, yeah? Because yeah. the sandwiches are all different for this now. Right. All right. So, this is the cutting bit, yeah? It says use with thin dyes. This one is for embossing, it tells us, okay? Using with standard embossing folders. Yep. That's the thinner ones. So it was the gingham one I showed you, yeah? Using with 3D 
embossing folders. Yeah. We need um, to do different ones. All, all right. right. So we just need number one, right, which number is one, the yeah. one in my hand, and a new one, number four. Oof, it's a grey okay. one. Yeah. Where's the grey one, Julie? Well, I think I've just got it here. Do they all have numbers on these plates? Yeah, look. Oh, brilliant. Number four. So yeah. we've labelled them up, right? Yep. Yeah. So what it says is you put number one down first. Yeah. So we're not actually having a plate now today for yeah. our sandwich. That's our thick, chunky slice of bread. Yeah? Yeah. That goes there. Then we're going to grab our folder. Now, which one did we say we'd use? The time one. Yeah, time one, yeah. Yeah. So we've already cut this piece of card. Yeah. We yeah. know it's the right size, yeah? So what you do is, I can't even open it. It's like a folder, yep. yeah? And you put your card inside oh, it. Yes. Just get it, use this line here to make sure you think you've got it straight, yeah? Okay. You put that in there. This is your filling of your sandwich. Yep. That's going to go on there. And then we put our number four plate, our grey one, back on. And it is that number four plate heavier, is it? It's a bit deeper. Yeah. Because if you think about it, this is a lot thicker than those thin dies we're putting through. So we're not using those two clear plates. We're using this instead. So that goes through. And then I'm going to push it. You should start to feel the handle go. Yeah. Same thing. Roll it that way. You need quite a bit of muscle, don't you? You do. Yeah. Uh, is it working faster, slower? Um, just just that, what you were doing were fine. Okay. Now, I have to say, if anybody purchases the machine, all these plates do come with the machine. Oh, you right, don't okay. just get the machine. Yeah, you can get cracking and you can get going. That's brilliant. Now, if you open that up now, yeah. take out your work and show it up to the camera, you can see that's, that's the back. But hold, that's the back of it. But if you hold up, you've got your... We're out of shot, my love. You've got your typewriter, time warp. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, do you like that? Yeah. So it just does a little bit of, it's a little bit of interest. And do you know what we've got one and I haven't got it at home? We've actually got one that does music notes. Yes. Yeah, so it's at my office, do you remember? I remember you doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So we can do another one depending on time, but but that's just a nice little addition. Yep. Oh, actually, actually, we need to keep this out, my love, because I've just remembered we need to cut another um white piece don't we you know with the scallops yeah so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna you take that okay i'm gonna cut you some card down i'm just gonna cut this by eye and get it and hope that it's right just fits on look perfect right now what i want you to do is i want you to work out what plates you need right number that, one now oh you've just done something you can actually come back from the other side and turn the handle the other way. Okay. You don't have to always start from the right-hand side. So, using with thin dies. So, we need number one. Which you've got. Number two, please. That's that one. So, lay that on. That goes on top of it there. Yeah. Uh, then we need number three. Yeah. Which is, which is your bread, isn't it? Bread, yeah. So, yeah. does it matter which way it goes around? No. Okay. What I would do is I'd lay them up though sat on there right. rather than in your hand. So get them in position right, okay, yeah, yeah. and pop them on that platform. Number three and then the card it's the thing we've been passing, yeah. Fill in, yeah. Fill in. Yep. And some more bread. That's over there near you. Now you've just to be careful yeah, now that you don't move it yeah. when you put the other bread on top. Sometimes you can hold it down with a bit of um, scotch tape, that kind of thing. Right. Or post-it notes. Okay. So, so I'm going to push, push it down. them in, push them in. Yeah, look, can you start to feel it going? Yeah, That's I'll, brilliant. Yeah, I'll hold it. Okay. So we, we can work both arms. We can go one way, then we can that's go fantastic. the other way. Yes, that's, that's, going. that's really good. And it's little questions like that that people think they always have to go in from the same yeah, side. Yeah, no, that's great. And you don't. Yeah, that's and great. Did you hear that clunk and click? Yeah. That's normal. There we go. And look how we've got the most, most frugal, frugal crafting. And then you've got your... It's that machine's fantastic, it's isn't it? Brilliant, isn't it? It's, it's brilliant. absolutely brilliant. It doesn't do washing up, though. No? No. do not do washing up on it, mm. tea. <laughs> OK. I have, I have to um, admit, it is a good craft tool. But I always say to people, it's like a birthday present kind of purchase. Yeah, or yeah. a Christmas present. Yeah. It's an investment piece, Craig. I like that. I've just sat down and thought, why does my seat feel cold? 
And I've just sat on plate number four. <laughs> That's because you're the filling. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Right. I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you do exactly the same stamping as we did for this one. All right. Yeah, with yeah. your ink pads. Yep. Yeah. Sure. And getting your, getting your um, everything lined up. You want your sky and stuff. Sky first, yep. Yeah. The right one, isn't it? Yeah, yep. it is. Just checking your in shot and everything. Yeah, looking good. I love that effect. Yeah. Yep. Could you pass me the balmy blue, please? I yeah? can, sir. Thank you. Okay. Lovely, lovely job. Okay. Uh, the suede, what's it do for? Please? Crumb cake, you want for that one? For oh, crumb cake is yes, it first. Yes, it is, yep. Which way is it round? That way, isn't it? Yep, you're right, yep. That means sort of points towards this way. Now I'm wondering what it might look like with two rocks here. Because we've not used the rocks. Okay, from yeah. the stamp set. I, I, you know what I mean? I just yeah, think yeah. it's a nice a nice little gap. I'm wondering if... Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, those yeah. two rocks in the soft yeah. suede. You could always do the grasses next to them. Yeah, well, there's my block. Oh, it's a big block up. for a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I should oh, have said that. it's a big block for a little rock. Yeah, good that. Did you have in that one? I'm having that one. Good that one. <laughs> Were you thinking inside, that's my girl? That's my girl. Yeah. Good, now, that, might, I like that. I don't think I've used these before, so you might want to have a stamp and have a practice, because yeah. remember last week I said you could have... I think mm. you might want to tap it. Now, not too hard, little tap, 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 quite if you'll get a plenty of ink on. Yeah. And then yeah. press down there, but press quite... Overlap it with the sand. It'll come down maybe a bit, but yeah, that looks good. Two little rocks, they look good, don't I they? Like that. I like that. And maybe a little grass at side. Yeah. You know, just a little one, I'm thinking. A little grass, a little grass. There we go, a little grass. No, I'm getting giddy now. No. <laughs> Are you trying to fit another grass? You can do. You could do. You could see how it goes. It's in its side, yeah? Yeah, it could even overlap it. But... Let's try the side. It could even overlap it as if it's growing in front a bit. Overlap that one you've done. I've got some ideas for next week, class. I'm going to write them down when we're finished. Good. Just, oh, look at that. Yeah. It looks like it's growing in front. How good? If you hold that up to camera, it does look like that grass is actually growing in front of the rocks. Although those rocks do look a bit like chocolates to me, but maybe mm. that's because I gave up chocolate for Lent. And I'm like, <laughs> but yeah, do you like that? Yeah, it's good, is not it? But can I just show you, you did yeah. this one. Uh, earlier and the difference sometimes just you've stamped every time you do it it'll look a little bit different because of how much you've inked it up what pressure you've done yeah do you know do you know what i mean every card is unique yep you know that you're doing right would you like to add on a greeting i would okay and what do we think we'll have today this sky looks quite dark so i think you're wonderful all right okay a long thin one again oh we'll have to see if it fits on that block now i want to take that congratulations one off okay and pop it back in the stamp set we've not actually talked about storing our stamps so should we try that just plonk it in there yep. and we'll sort it out should we try that thing where you yes, put it so down put floor, yeah put it there. so it's not bending yep. now i'm wondering if that's not good oh it's stuck to my finger <laughs> yeah is it wide enough for it or is it not big enough does it just fit on just fit it's on right okay so this is quite a tricky stamp now we, we had a few problems make sure we 
you yeah hold it in the middle and make sure you that's in oh that's plenty i think okay. yep and then even pressure with two hands that's great yeah. it's hard camera. not to nut the uh, camera isn't it so even pressure okay right now look what a much better job you've done yeah. there because i could tell you held it with two hands right you held it with both hands sometimes we can stamp with one hand and we can lean heavier to the right and I think naturally you your hands leaning heavy to the right. Yeah. But you did it with two hands there to balance it yeah, out, yeah. and it's come across. It's come yeah. out really well. That yeah. Okay. Let's see how we're doing for time. Right now, we're gonna we're gonna use a little bit of my favourite accessory. We're gonna accessorise our project, Craig. Right. Okay. Now this is quite tricky. Oh, here we go. I know. I know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it once and show you and then untie it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move your beautiful stamping. I'm really impressed with that. That's gorgeous. Okay. Don't ask me why. I always tie my stuff upside down. Right. Okay. What we're going to do, I'm trying to find the card that I made um, to show you. But this hasn't got embossing on. But I want this to have a little bit of linen thread coming round. All right. But I like to wrap it round twice because I think once it doesn't look much. It's quite narrow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what we do is we keep it we keep it on the spool. If we if we decide how much we think we need and we cut it off, yeah. Yeah. We actually waste ribbon or we waste um, thread or baker's twine. We waste it. So I always keep it on the spool, but you keep the loose end to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it round a couple of times. Once, like that, and twice here. And bring it over here, right? Okay. And you can, with a linen thread, you can just do it like you're tying your shoes. Now, I, I do know I've probably got a little bit of excess here at this left-hand okay. side, but it's all right. So I'm going to do it like I do my shoes, and then I'm just going to... You've got to try and keep it tight, though. Wrap it round and do a little knot like that. All right. Okay. And then pull that, keep that there like that. And then you see, we turn it back round. And then all that we're going to cut off, we're only losing about an inch. Yeah. Whereas if we'd guessed how much we need, we would have probably um, wasted more. Okay. All right. And then what will happen is, we can adjust it if we need to. We might we might need to move our bow over a little bit. Yeah. And it can sit inside one of those scallops, yeah? Like okay. that. But I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to let you tie one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn it back over. I'm not going to be so mean. And I've already wrapped it round for you. Like that. But there you take your right hand side. Okay. And then start it like you've just got to keep so, this as tight as you can. Yeah, but what, where am I going now? You're tying a bow over here. How? How would you do your laces? Right, I'll, I'll show you again. So I do it right over left. So I'm going to do right over left and make a cross. Right. And then that's going to go under to do a... Let's do that first part. Do you want me to start from there? No, no, let me go. Do that first part and then you do your loop like you loop your laces. All my all my customers hate time bows, most of them. Right, so uh, it's hard. It's, it's hard. Okay. So I don't know what where am I going? Right. So so show me again. So if I go like, like that. Bring this one so it, it that's it, that's it. So left's going over right and it goes under. Okay. Okay, I'll hold it for you. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. You've so you've done the first part. And then we're And now you just do your loop. It's not easy this. Not easy at all, right? Oh, all right. No, it's not yeah. easy. No, it's not easy. So what we do now is we call it zhuzhing. Who? Zhuzh. You zhuzh it. You, right. you titify it. Yeah? Okay. Do you know what I mean? So we pull this little bit there, end, and we pull that. Right, okay. And you've got to make the knot in the middle as tight 
as you can. Yeah. All right. And we just do that. And we spend a few minutes just sorting your bow out. But actually, look, once we once we once we sort it, it's actually all right. Yeah. It's good. We're just it it's a bit loose and do, but that's fine because we can disguise that, and I'll show you a little trick to disguise that. Okay, so we've got our little bow yep. over at that side, yeah? And we'll bring our image in and we'll just see. Yep, it's going to be equal. We're going to... So, you think it's a little bit slack there, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? How am I going to sort that? Well, the one of the tricks is always learning how to cover... Not cover a mistake, it's not a mistake as such. No. It's just a little inconvenience, we'll say. Where did those foam pads go? Your favourites. Did I take them off you? Yeah. <laughs> We've not even got that much stuff on here, Craig. I can't even see them. Have you eaten them? No, we got them. They're hiding under plate number four that was under that my bottom. plate number four's right. got more problems than enough to so do it. So what we can do with this... Oh, let's just trim that off for now. Yep. Right, because it's then it's not in the way. What we can do... So we're gonna put we know that we're going to layer this up with foam pads. Right. So I'm going to pull this in from this end okay. to tighten that, yeah? And I'm going to pop a foam pad over oh, it. like that. Yeah. Good thinking that. And then I'm going to do the same from the other side and pop a foam pad over there. And I've trapped them. And then look, the excess is going to be hidden in the middle. All right, yeah. Do you see, what, do you see why I've done that? Yeah. yeah. So then now we will take that to go sit over there. We don't need any foam pads in that area. It's in the top. One, two, three, four. We'll take the backs off these and that'll be great. Yeah? It is. Okay. Right, so peel the backs off those. I'll take the backs off this. Thank you. Super duper. I just want to look that you get the measurement above and below the same. So it needs to go a bit. That's it. And that's going to sit in that. Right, about to, yeah, bag. No, it's fine. It's going to sit there in that little scallop. It's fine. Oh, we trapped it. All right, yeah. We're good, we're good. We trapped it with Timmy. I'm just trying to get the end. I think we've stuck it with a foam pad. Hang on. Scissors are the marvellous thing, you know. There we, go. there we go. There we go. That's the one. Now, you might like to have um, these little bits like that. Mm. Or you might want to cut it yeah, down cut a bit. bit. Yeah? yeah? Want to cut them down a bit? Yeah. Okay. So I'd go about that. I got the broken scissors. I don't know. They should be fairly sharp, but just try this pair. Blimey. You always have that in kitchen, don't I you? Oh, mean scissors. Whew. Oh, that was hard work. <laughs> Were you stressed? We stressed tying that bow. It's not easy, is it? It's not stress. It's just, I think it's just practice, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. Um, so just make sure you're happy with that. Yeah, I like that. And then. Just the end, end of it, like. Right, okay. Is it a bit frayed? Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. It's a natural. It's uh, rustic. Okay. It's rustic. And then we've got this to then glue down. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. On our project. All right? Yeah. So you're going to do your glue. Now, just have to make sure you glue up to there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because what we'll find is whenever you put ribbon round, when we're holding it down for gluing on, we need to... Yeah. It, it won't want to stick where this bit is. Yeah. So... Can you see it's pulling away a little bit? Can you also use foam pads for that? You could if you wanted to layer the whole thing up right. again. Okay. But you'd use a lot. Yeah. You'd be using a lot of foam pads. Okay, so just going... We're going around pretty close to the edge, about half a centimetre in. That's lovely. And then same here, but across yeah, there. Yeah, oh, good, good, yep. Yeah. And uh, make sure you do down these sides. Yep. Yeah. yeah, perfect.
Okay. What have we got there? Football pitch. Football pitch, yep. right. So turn that over. Okay. And stick it down to your card. Making sure you, yeah, move it about, get it right. And then make sure you give an extra pressure around here. Oh, where course, you, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Because yeah. it's wanting to pull see, away. I'm, I'm a bit worried about You're, using a thing. Yeah. Would, you, would you use something like, you know, like that? You can use, um, you could use like the end of a ruler. Right, okay. Yeah, or things out. like that. Or you could even use, like, if you were careful not to cut, you could even yeah, use your end of your scissors. But see, here. About a block. Yeah, but it could oh, have ink on it, yeah. couldn't it? You yeah. know. Yep. So, but we're good there. That's great. What you've about done, you've done great there. If we, uh... <laughs> but pad. that's got foam pads under it, so it's not going to stick down. Oh yeah. Yeah. What what I what actually what I used to have in my craft room yeah. is some mini little pegs. You know the pegs that got little wooden pegs. You know old fashioned wooden pegs. Oh yeah, the old, yeah, the old. You get yeah. a peg and you hold it down there with oh, a peg. Yeah, a shot, yeah. Get a pack of cheap wooden pegs in your craft room. Yeah. And that two pegs on there. I know it sounds daft, would we'll hold that down. Yeah, yeah. And then you look, it's fine though now, it's glued. We're glued there, we're good. It, so that. I think we're gonna leave it at there today with your cards. Now, do you remember your hashtag? I do. What's your hashtag? Oh, you covered it up so you can try catch me out. <laughs> ah, no, you're game fun. <laughs> the hashtag is hashtag make a card, send a card. Send a card. So let's bring in your two cards that you've done today. I'm losing everything. There we go. So do you know what? I have to admit, I don't think I didn't think I'd create cards like that today. Right. Especially the, the bow. So what we've done is we've love done that, some die cutting. Yep. Yeah. So we learned how to do the the die cut, and yep. it's from the scallop contours. I'm just going to try and judge that. We're still judging. Judging. Okay. Um, and then we've we've talked a bit about the different machines, the stamping yeah, cut yeah. and emboss machine. Okay. And uh, we did the boulders. They look really good, yeah, don't good. we, actually? Yeah, good, that. Yeah. that looks amazing, how you've, how you've stamped that. That looks brilliant. That's a brilliant card, love what we've done there. And then we've done some embossing. We've yeah. embossed the background. Um, and you, we've even made your tie a bow. Yeah. So you, we've, we've only done two cards today. We did three last week, but these are a lot harder than last the, week's The bow cards. tying was, was, was quite difficult, but it is about practising and it is about yeah. doing it. And it's about enjoying yourself. Yeah, of course it is. No one wants to be under stress and pressure. No, but when you yeah. when you when, you know when I finish that bow now, I feel like I can do another one. I've got the yeah, confidence to yeah, do it. Yeah. So you've got two more nice cards. You made five cards now. I made five cards. You've I'm made a beginner. five cards. I'm yeah. Bossing. I'm, you've got I'm a little layering, stash. I'm matting. You're matting. You're what, layering. What does that mean? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> no, no, seriously, it's, it's good. Um, it's, 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 it, it's, At least you're not molting. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. It does make you feel look, um, yeah. like, like you've achieved something. It's it's, it's enjoyable. Good. So next week we'll do some more techniques. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you've learned from these, and you did you you did your measurements yourself as well. Yeah. So um, thanks for watching, everybody. If you do have any questions about any of the items that we've used, or about any of the techniques, then you can leave your questions in the comments section of this video. Um, I will be on live chatting, chatting along with the video tonight. Um, so yeah, any questions, please do ask me and we'll be happy to help, to help you out. And thanks Craig again for, thank you, Julie. for, for, I'm just really impressed with this one. I just, I think the boulders and yeah, everything, yeah. it just looks realistic, really realistic. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll both see you again next week. Do you remember see we do our little wave with our hands? Yep. Bye. See thank ya. you.